we're back with part three where we've got a, uh, a question in about staking pods. Yeah, so someone, I, I'm not sure who it was because he wrote the map, but um, just they sent in a question to ask him, what, what's, what bank do I use for, for my various products? Like, so yeah. the Pots Plays thing and the uh, Full Suit. So it's not just a black and white answer. No. So it depends on your own needs. So in my case, I'm making a living out of it, ever approaching busting my bank is not an option, yeah. so I do it in a way to reduce the volatility. So for my needs, a thousand unit bank is appropriate. Now, do I keep a thousand units in my various betting accounts? No, I don't. I keep, and so the, in the nine years I've been doing it, the biggest drawdown I've ever had is just over 20%, right? Yeah. So I keep about 20% of my bank in the in the betting accounts, okay? Although I do base it, so I'm, so, I'm saying I keep about 200 units yep. in the various betting accounts, and, but I base the bets on a thousand unit bank. Okay, so effectively you could reduce that to 250 units, but that means when I'm having, say, a, um, a 10 unit bet, on a thousand unit bank it's 1% of your bank. Yeah. If you're using 250, it's 4% of your bank. So if you use a 250 unit bank, the volatility is going to increase. And um, part of what I'm saying is you have to reduce your dollars per unit or increase your dollars per unit in line with the fluctuations in your bank. So those fluctuations will be a lot more dramatic if you're using, say, a 250 unit bank as opposed to a thousand yeah. unit bank. So I hope that makes some sense to the um, listener, that wrote, the, 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 the subscriber that wrote, wrote in. Um, but I would suggest the minimum you really want to use for my stuff is 500 units. I think that keeps it at a level. So, for instance, if it's a thousand unit bank and I have a bad run and we draw down 20%, and you're betting $100 a unit, then your bets are $80 a unit. So the, yeah. the, the fluctuation in your results aren't going to be that great. But if, you, if it's a 500 uh, unit bank yeah. and you start at 50, that drawdown becomes more significant. So well, uh, I can give you a real life example of your bots because I've been getting your stuff since the beginning and I started out at $10 a unit and I think about, well, how long ago was it when Set Square won the Oaks? Was that two years ago? Two years yeah. ago. I reckon about at that stage I got to 50 a unit. I built the bank up to that stage and now I'm back down around $30 a unit. And that's just, uh, that also factors in some of the stuff that I'm doing outside of just your stuff. But that gives an idea of how the bank ebbs and flows and what sort of run I've been on. But you have to be able to do that. And as you say, I'm like you and, prob and definitely like you. I'm never in any danger of going broke. Yeah. And like, let's say you got, a, you said 1,000 units. Yeah. How much would your maximum outlay on a race be? For me, it's two percent, right? Okay. Which is very conservative. But that's yeah, designed. No, that's, fine, yeah. that's designed for my specific needs. I would say anything up to five is okay. Mm -hmm. If you get beyond five, you start to get to a point where you know you're going to introduce a lot of volatility into your punting when you have a bad run. That's just the nature of it. So yeah. I would suggest the punters that they keep their maximum outlay on any race at five percent. And to be honest, I don't get the two percent that often. The punters that get my stuff know that would be 20 units on one race, and it probably hasn't happened in 12 months. Heard, so yeah, I can't remember the last time we had like 20 units on a race. Occasionally it's 14 or 15, more often yeah. than not it's somewhere between 6 and 12 is the regular. So we're, we're talking about, you know, around about 1% on a race. Yeah, that, that's pretty it's standard for a professional one, so. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's, that's like, like, as I said, that's for me because that, that's my source of income, and that, that reduces a lot of the volatility. So you can take on more risk if it's not your only source of income and you're, you're willing to, um, but just be prepared for a bit more volatility if you do. Yeah, see, yeah. mine's probably different because I'm doing both racing and sport. My sport bet, some of my bigger sports bets would be probably up, up around the 6 to 7% of the bank. But the thing with those is the variance in those is a lot less than what there is in racing. And your turnover's lower, like as in you're betting less. Yeah. So it's um, it's just a dynamic thing that you just you so keep working with. There's one thing I did want to touch on that I think uh, some of the viewers might find a bit interesting, is that I looked back at what the way I was doing things before I ever started doing a set, yeah. and the difference in the results because I was regularly producing close to 10% on turnover back then, and particularly last year it dropped as low as three, which was a real. I wanted to look at what if if I'd inadvertently done something to affect that. 
And the biggest difference I could find from all those years prior to when I ever did a set and after was the amount of horses I was back in per race. Yeah. It had dropped from 3.7 to 2.6. And I never did that on purpose. I fell into it slowly. Yeah. And I think if you're a skillful punter, it's not that hard to back every horse in the race and break even. Yeah, if you're taking the right prices. If you're staking yeah. correctly, and it's not that hard, right? So it stands to reason that each horse you eliminate from backing 100% of the horses on a, in a race effectively improves your margin yeah. as long as you don't eliminate the winner. I think that's a better way of thinking about races than starting at, I just want to back this, this and this. And I, somewhere in my mind, I'd flip that at some point. I used to start with a race and say, what, which, which horses here am I happy to eliminate? Whether it's because of their price yep. or because I think they can't win the race. And I used to try and corner the market in the, in, in the winning chances. And I think that was a much more effective way for me than just trying to say, right, well, these are the two horses I really want to back on, I want to have a really good result on. Yep. So I think there'll be a, a noticeable change in the betting plans that has been in recent times. So on the Saturday just gone, we bet in eight races and had, I think, 28 horses on the betting plan, yeah. which is a f probably six more than we've had in recent times, and I think that's going to bear some fruit for us. I think one of the benefits of betting on racing too, let's say back in the day you were getting 10% profit on turnover, now you're getting three. If you were getting 10%, you know, better than 10% on sport back then, what would you be getting now? You'd be probably struggling a bit. Yeah, well, it's just so, it's, it's so hard. almost impossible to get on, so. Yeah, so, well, that too, but I feel like this is one of the this is one of the big benefits and try and get you know sort of smart guys into betting on racing is to understand the inefficiencies that are still in horse racing oh, markets. Yeah. And the thing and compared the, to sport. And the other thing is they have to bet. Yeah, and there's so much product. Yeah, we know that probably too much. But there is so much product there that it's only gonna increase the inefficiencies, which yeah. gives opportunity. Which with sport is very difficult to find because bookmakers do a great job at just pricing A B B where in horse racing it's a bit more and the other so, thing, so I think you can back a lot of horses in the race and make 10%, right? And yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's achievable and I need to get back to doing that. And that's my project for now. And it's so, so far, six weeks into the year, it's going well. You can do better than that. DK, for example, makes a higher margin than that. But he's extremely disciplined and extremely selective. Yeah. So I think you've either got to get in that path, yeah. the other path I'm talking about, getting caught in the middle is very mm -hmm. dangerous. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a dangerous spot to be in. Um, and the, the, it's it's funny you mentioned that about the being able to sort of get on and the difference in sports. The, the, and you said that the bookies are good at pricing A versus B. The other thing that the bookies are very good at is restricting accounts and mm. not letting you bet if you've got half an idea. And one of the sports that I've been working on, that's something that I've probably failed to adjust in in the last 12 to 18 months, is the fact that... Um, they are pricing it slightly better than what they had been, but also they're restricting it to the point now and using that information against me to the point where it's making it really hard. So, yeah, um, so, so we need to get these people to come over the racing and go, yeah, plenty of plenty of avenues to have a bet, plenty of product to have a bet with, and markets are a lot more inefficient. Mm. That's a good note to finish on. I hope you enjoyed that little bit there, punters, and I hope that answered the question of the... Uh, Subscribe at Rain. We got what's that job you got? No, no, no. Right? That's um, the cook one to know where I am. Oh. Um, one other thing, just before we finish, I'll give him another shout out. I gave him a bit of a plug last week. If you're on Twitter or Facebook, head to Punters Collective if you're interested in Brisbane racing. Nick Meredith and yeah, the boys up there yeah. are doing a really, really good job. There's they're putting out the early uh, the early betting markets. They're looking at horses in the yard. They're covering Spurs. them. Yeah, that's what I'm letting you know say. if they've got the gear changes yeah. and Spurs on, all that sort of stuff. Um, they're just doing their best, so make sure you head over there. And also, they're probably doing more for turnover in Queensland racing than racing Queensland. Than race race or the rest of them. That's probably true. What's the, the rumor on the mill coming around that um, you have to? They're going to introduce in Queensland. You have to trial before you race. Yes, that that's, was something they did mention. That would be around. great. That would be. Great. And uh, hopefully Victoria could take a leaf out of their book. And speaking of social media, if you haven't liked either one to follow on Twitter or Facebook, make sure you do that. Especially head over to Facebook. It's a real good way to keep up to date with everything that's happening. So um, make sure you follow those two things. All right, punters, well, we'll see you about this time next week. Good luck.